All right. Introduction to titration. So we got an introduction. Guess what? We're going to get to it also later as well. The AP Classroom videos are really key to this. I'd also, I'm going to think that you should watch those as well. So this is used with acids and bases, most common. Also used with redox reaction. It's the least common. However, it does come up. Now, what's the concept? Is you use your known, your titrant in here, because you all know everything about this. You'll know the volume you dispense. You know the molarity. You know the substance. And the chemical, and you'll know the chemical amounts because you know what you'll start with down here. So you'll know all of these measurements in order to understand this and the chemical reaction. The idea is that you're trying to determine what's in here for the unknown. So you've got maybe an acid solution. An indicator will change color to let you know when you're done. You have an initial reading in your burette, and you might notice it doesn't have to be at the top. You're just trying to understand how much you are dispensing in order to get to that final. Then you can use the math in order to determine information about your unknown. So some key aspects here. You have, usually they like using some graphs here. Here's some examples. The equivalence point. The equivalence point is when the moles of one equals the moles of the other. So this uses stoichiometry and molarity. That's why we've talked about both prior to this. Equivalence point. It's again, where those are equal amounts, ideal stoichiometry. Don't worry about pH. That will be different. Uh, coming up, and sometimes they use questions from, I want to say, the future about acids and bases and when you really need to know titrations and use the same visuals for right now. pH is not relevant to us right now. What we're looking for is the equivalence point. And again, those are equal amounts of moles, which is related to molarity and stoichiometry, both two things you understand right now. Now, careful what to watch for. Usually, it's the unknown is in the flask. What's uncommon is what's in the burette, but I've seen them ask those on questions. It's not really any different mathematically. It's just different in a situational standpoint. Molarity is moles per volume in liters. Be careful of your units. You often will be dispensing in milliliters. So even though you have 50 milliliters up here, if you need to determine a molarity, you need to understand how does that work with my molarity of what I'm given. The volume of titrant often is not from initial. It's not usually zero and definitely not to zero. So you will look at how much is measured. This is a great example of them giving you, you giving a burette and you doing the measurements yourself. So want to make sure that you look at those. And again, watching the videos on AP Classroom, I think will even make it better. Because the idea here is that we're being very simplistic here. If you look too far, like on other examples online, AP examples, they may take it to the later units, which is going to be much, much, much more complicated. This is just an introduction. Equivalence point, stoichiometry, molarity. Let me know what questions you have. I'll catch you on the flip side.